a sophisticated gentleman's club, a restored classic piece of Italian history, and a boxing ring on a super yacht. All come together in this video of Serenissima One. But actually this video is about other things that come together too. It's about a yacht owner who has a huge passion for building yachts and decided that the time had come to build a yacht the way that he wanted it to be built, designed the way that he wanted it designed based on a vast experience at sea. So this is about the coming together of the yacht designer of his choice and the shipyard of his choice. The design firm he selected was Nuvolari Leonard, a hugely experienced company with a superb eye for styling, coupled with a savvy understanding of the need for practicality. The shipyard? Mengiyai, based near Istanbul, a yard who have made yachting headlines in recent years with some beautifully produced vessels in the 40 to 50 meter size range. But this was to be different to any yacht they had built before. Nuvolari Leonard have designed, quite simply, a masterpiece. We'll be looking in more detail at the yacht in a moment, but first I want to tell you about the process of selecting a shipyard. A number of yards were visited, but Mengi Yai were selected due to their pedigree of yachts in this size range, the quality of their work, and a vital consideration, the way that they really listened to the brief and were willing to work to it rather than to impose their own ideas. The result is a stunning super yacht with a length of 47 meters, a beam of 9 meters and a draft of 2.65 meters. She will be just under 500 gross ton at 499 GT and her tier 3 compliant Caterpillar engines will push her to an estimated top speed of 16 knots and a comfortable cruise of 12. I say an estimated top speed because the yacht's not launched yet. Once we have the sea trials, we'll know exactly with precision what that top speed is. But the hull design is done by Vanu Sanon, so you can imagine it's going to be pretty impressive. The yacht, as you can see, is already in an advanced stage of construction, and she's lying next to a sister ship. Now, when I said that the owner is passionate about yachts and yacht building, I wasn't kidding. He's building two of these one of which is being made available for sale. And that's the one that we're here to film today, starting with a swim platform. Now, I wanted to be on camera for this part of the video so that you get an impression of the size of this huge swim platform. As you can see from there, there's a housing in the middle that actually houses what's called a transformer swim platform. That's one of those large swim platforms that extends, and as it goes up, or down, steps come out. So you can easily access the dock, or if you're at anchor, it's a great way to access the ocean and to go for a swim. Now over here, and also on the other side, there are connection points for docking stations. So the captain can come down, connect up, and actually dock the yachts from here, which is a fantastic vantage point. And then you can see a door here that leads to what the designer calls a hobby room. Now a hobby room is somewhere that the owner can store scuba gear. He's got a workbench for his own personal hobbies. He can wash down the underwater cameras, for example, there. You get the idea of what that area is for. And then there's this beautiful central staircase that gives a real sense of occasion when you board the yacht. A central stairway gives a sense of occasion to your arrival on board and leads to a very spacious aft deck indeed. Spacious enough in fact for not just a seating area, but also a fully restored Riva Ariston. This boat almost needs a video to itself. 
taken back to its bare bones by Reva's own refit facility. It will make for a stunning conversation piece on the aft deck, as well as a very unique and stylish way to arrive in port when the mothership is at anchor. You can already see the boom crane fittings for this operation that will be neatly concealed on the finished yachts. Moving forward, we arrive to the main deck salon and inside dining area. The renderings I'm showing you on screen were quite early additions, but I'll be back to film the finished yachts so you'll be able to see the eventual decor choices. To port, we have a large butler's pantry and a surprisingly spacious galley that is specced with absolutely top-end appliances. And to starboard, we pass through a lobby area with an elevator. And here, something caught my eye. This is the side boarding ladder. And just look at how beautifully engineered it is. Now, the actual ladder itself is stored inside the bulwark. So the idea is that this door opens up, the ladder slides out and lowers, and then guests that are arriving by tender can come up the steps and board the yacht. And this is a yacht that's made to be enjoyed by friends and by family. It's a very social yacht. Because if you think that the next thing that I show you is going to be the master stateroom on the main deck, you're very mistaken and you're in for a very big treat. Just look at this. The area that would traditionally be dedicated to an owner's stateroom is actually used for a stunning gentleman's club, complete with a walk-in wine cellar and a stylish Burkle prosciutto slicer that's being sourced as we speak. Guests can enjoy some sumptuous pata negra with a glass of Francia Corta as they chat together on the balcony, because yes, there is an opening balcony here too, to allow fresh air in and create an exquisite ambience that quite honestly, I think will be difficult to leave. But guests, of course, at some time must leave to their staterooms below deck. This is a fairly conventional layout with four staterooms and well-proportioned ensuite heads. However, they have had the smart idea of putting a sliding dividing wall in the aft cabins so that this can be one luxurious VIP suite with a sofa or two cabins, one of which has a sofa bed. But what about the owner, I hear you say? Well, the owner has much of the bridge deck to themselves. An aft-facing bed will overlook a very spacious deck area, and further forward is an impressive walk-in closet and ensuite bathroom. But what really impressed me on this deck was further forward, and once again, I need to appear on screen to show you. Look at the width of these side decks, wide enough in fact for some very stylish wing stations, which I'm going to show you on screen here. Now the side decks lead to this huge flush foredeck. And I found this particularly interesting here, these fittings here, there's three of them, and they're made so that you can fit those hanging cocoon seats and you can swing here and enjoy the scenery but they're also used for something else, something that I have never seen before on any super yacht. A boxing ring. Now, of course, a buyer of the yacht doesn't have to have a boxing ring on board, but I have to say that it's a pretty cool thing to have on a yacht, and with boxing becoming an increasingly popular way of keeping fit, it could really catch on. By keeping the deck flush, and at a high level, space is created for a side opening toy store for jet skis and a small tender. Chase boats are becoming so popular now that this seems an intelligent choice. Remember, you do also have the Riva Ariston on board. And then we have the sun deck, the longest sun deck of any yacht of this size currently on the market. This will be 
an extraordinary place to enjoy cocktails and dining, protected from the wind by some sliding glass doors. Gym equipments can be put here, sunbathing. I have to say that this is one of the parts of the yacht that I found most impressive. I have to tell you that this is one of the most exciting projects that we have ever covered. But there's an important point that I want to make because sometimes I see comments from viewers who assume that because a yacht is being sold, there's something wrong with it or somebody somewhere may be running out of money. That's not always the case and it is certainly not the case here. Here we have an owner who loves the build process and the ownership process too because remember, he's keeping one of these yachts for himself. But like a select few individuals in our industry, he wants to do something amazing, something that's never been done before. The build process is so amazing, so fascinating. It's almost addictive. I'm so glad that there are people out there who have the means to do this and the desire to do it. They enrich our industry. I can't wait to get back to film the yacht when she's finished and out at sea because who knows? Maybe Serenissima One could enrich the quality of your life too if you become her new owner. <laughs>